नमस्कार यू आर वॉचिंग किशोर मंच एंड पी एम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर फाइव आई एम राहुल एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो अ वेबकास्ट ऑन एन सी ई आर टीज ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल टूडे वी ब्रिंग यू द चैप्टर वन एंड टू ऑफ क्लास फाइव एंड एंड द सब्जेक्ट इज इंग्लिश एंड टू एक्सप्लेन दिस वंडरफुल चैप्टर वी हैव प्रोफेसर वर्दा निकल जे इन आर स्टूडियो थैंक यू वेरी मच यू हैव ज्वाइन दस गुड आफ्टरनून प्रोफेसर वर्दा एंड मीन वाइड यू जस्ट नोट डाउन आर टोल फ्री नंबर वन एट जीरो जीरो वन 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 टू सिक्स फाइव and uh, 1800112199 and you can also send us an email on ciet.kishormanch@gmail.com so now i am going to ask you a question and the question is now this is the time of summer and we like one thing the most in the summer it is very attractive it is very tasty it is uh, you know it is very sweet and um, everybody likes it and it is also cold yes the 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 uh, you know uh, professor varda gave me some hint it is very cold and it likes when it is cold only so guess what it is and i'm sure mm hmm hmm your guess is right your guess is correct the name the name is ice cream so the 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 man who sells the ice cream is very you know important person in our lives because when we are, uh, are at our homes so we uh, will be waiting for him in our society in our uh, you know near our house so that we can go and buy some ice creams but now we are at our homes so we can learn the chapter the ice cream man so let us begin with the ice cream man so professor sure. varda let us start yes thank you very much Uh, we are going to talk about chapters one and possibly chapter two in this session today. Okay. The first one, the poem, is about the ice cream man. As uh, Rahul has very nicely introduced it, the concept of ice cream being very sweet, very cold, and because it's cold, it's very welcome in summers. Though I have seen many people in Delhi enjoying ice cream even in winter. Yes. There, there is a special joy in eating ice cream in winter. Right. Um. Yes so uh, about the ice cream man i mean about the poem the ice cream man this was written at a time when uh, when we had ice cream carts trundling down the street and there was a bell attached to it yes. and the bell would be ringing so that the children would come to know long before the ice cream man was visible they would come to know from the uh, ringing of the bell that he is about to come so nowadays we buy ice cream at you know milk outlets mm -hmm. uh, but there was a time i remember when we would wait for the uh, ice cream man yes and then there were ice cream parlors which were opened and uh, so here i am not here to explain the poem to you nor the lesson but we are going to look at the poem and the rationale why it is in this textbook particularly teachers would also be interested in how to make these poems and lessons interesting they are of course interesting the content is interesting but they can provoke the creativity of the child they can um, interact with the child on various things for instance when i read the poem i began to wonder yes we enjoy ice cream as rahul ji has also already said then i thought do eskimos have ice cream Eskimos live in such cold regions they are always surrounded by ice and snow do they enjoy ice cream and i looked it up and to my surprise i found that eskimos also eat ice cream they don't have uh, ice cream made from you know dairy products they have a special or a different kind of ice cream made from animal fat because uh, well there are no uh, cows or buffaloes living in those cold regions so they use animal fat and fresh berries and they have a special name for it i would like the teacher to look it up and tell it to the children there are um, many different things that um, can come up during the teaching of this poem wonderful poem a very simple poem but it really makes your mouth water there are uh, i'd like to show one more thing here that about um, ice cream the indian version of ice cream as you can see here the have you ever eaten kulfi the ice cream from north india and then here they have shown a man who is making kulfi who is actually uh, pouring some sweet syrup he takes out the kulfi on a plate and then he pours some sweet syrup over it then it's made in a mold it's uh, shaped 
and then he arranges some faluda around it. So, this is introducing us to the, uh, to the children to homemade kulfi. There also used to be a kind of a wooden bucket in which ice cream was made. Of course, it could not be stored for a very long time that ice cream had to be freshly made and freshly consumed that is um, and it used to be like a family get together where people would sit around watch the ice cream wait for it to cool and then eat it sometimes children would interfere and eat it before it became solid also and many flavors were introduced in this. Um, the national education policy which was released in July this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. it also endorses among other things, it endorses the power of language. In uh, other words that we cannot take language or words for granted, mm -hmm. we need to think about words and not use them just because they are there you know. So, it brings in the concept of multilingualism. This was already there in our national curriculum framework, mm -hmm. but there is a need to now uh, implement it more forcefully and to uh, really bring about uh, to bring in the, the idea of respecting all languages. Okay, it is great to uh, see and it is great to know about the, all the languages because we are in India and um, there are there are there is a lot of uh, diversity in terms of languages, but if we talk about English language, English, yes. English textbook. So, how we can add, how we can see multilingualism from English textbook? Yes, that is a very good question. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, when we talk about uh, multilingualism, mm -hmm. many people think, you know, there are many misunderstandings about uh, multilingualism. Mm -hmm. There are many myths about multilingualism. Some people okay. think that multilingualism means particularly teachers when when I have been training teachers mm -hmm. they say that in my class I have 30 students and maybe around 10 mother tongues. So, okay. should should I learn all the mother tongues to explain the English uh, textbook? Okay. The answer is no of course not mm -hmm. it is not your job to learn 10 languages, mm -hmm. but it is your job to show the child that his or her language is respected. Right. I am not talking here of tolerance. I am not talking here of simple acceptance, mm -hmm. but a respect of all languages. As we can see here, the term here used in the textbook itself, which I just gave an example, is kulfi and faluda. So, these are not English words. Mm -hmm. You can see here kulfi, yes. and you can see the person here, uh, uh, you know, it is not a posh restaurant, it is not a, he is just a simple man. Um, you can find him in any rural or semi urban small right. town area and he is making uh, preparing this uh, kulfi and putting it on a plate and serving it. Mm -hmm. Again a very uh, simple plate no decoration it does not even right. look very costly. So, we are trying our best to um, bring in words and when I say the word kulfi is here or here mm -hmm. this remember is an NCERT textbook okay. produced uh, published by, by a national Apex organization. Mm -hmm. So, when we are including non-English words in the English textbook, it means we are endorsing multilingualism. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that children should just speak in their own mother tongues. We have to, teachers have to bring them progressively towards the target language, which in this case is English. Again, in the teachers pages also, there is scope for multilingualism, where teachers are encouraged to listen to children. If they ask a question, a comprehension question perhaps, then if the child while answering uses a non-English word, the teacher should not punish or penalize the children, but wait till the answer is complete. Understand the content, the meaning of the sentences used by the child and then maybe uh, introduce the English word to the child. Okay. For instance, in uh, one uh, one teacher was saying in a in a class that she wrote the word you know she wrote the alphabet um, the complete alphabet she circled the letter L mm -hmm. and then she said I want you to say words beginning with this she didn't say L she just said beginning with this and then uh, one child said lotus another child said lollipop and a third very shy child said ladki. Okay. Now it would have been very easy for the teacher to laugh 
and if the teacher had laughed the whole class would have laughed yes and that shy child would never have spoken again in yes. class agreed therefore but the teacher was sensitive enough mm -hmm. she said yes this is the correct sound okay this is the correct sound that you have produced now give me an english word okay yes so without hurting the dignity of the child right the teacher could handle the situation because she was sensitive enough for okay. for that okay. so we are respecting the child's mother tongue right but bringing the child closer or progressively to english lang language learning uh, in this lesson that follows this is called wonderful waste so waste and wonderful these are they seem to be very contradictory yes and here we can see and it is wonderful also ha huh? and <laughs> here you can see in the illustration now multilingualism comes through in the illustration as well okay you see this is a total a totally i mean an indian character yes there is a king here yes and there is a traditional person, wardrobe they are huh? wearing this is a cook okay and he has behind him many vegetables mm -hmm. uh, and the king is asking him after you cook the vegetables what do you do with the scraps Mm -hmm. you know you peel the vegetables yes. some seeds are left over or right. whatever what do you do with it mm -hmm. because the king had planned a grand dinner and he had come to inspect the kitchen okay and the chef says well i throw them away and the king became very strict he said no you will not throw them away mm -hmm. you have to think of a new way to use these scraps okay. there is so much a uh, huge you know two three baskets of scraps what will you do with them right and then that is how a very famous dish was invented and the name you can see here avial so okay. this is uh, very popular in kerala okay and um, it all began because a king was concerned about waste so you have so much to explain mm -hmm. you know there's a value that we should not waste food right especially in this covid times where food is scarce where many right. children don't uh, many many families don't right. get enough food right and we are also introducing them to a new world to a new um, to a region of india mm -hmm. which all may not be familiar with and then the exercises that follow that also talks about a story which is called bamboo curry okay. and the word bamboo, bamboo and the story is, bamboo is the tree? yes it's a well uh, it's a very long kind of grass yes. um and some there are many kinds of bamboos mm, as well yes, the bamboo yes. that is used to make doors mm -hmm. or chairs and the bamboo that um, that can be mm, the tender shoots can be uh, the inside part of it can be eaten and so on so here is a story from the northeast mm -hmm. so we have multiculturalism multilingualism yes. yes and so many mm, so much to learn in uh, and this is only the first chapter there are many more to uh, go through and i'm sure it will be very interesting <coughs> i hope that answers your question yes perfectly fine <laughs> we should respect each and every language which we know about and uh, if as uh, rightly uh, said by professor varda if there are 30 students in the class and 10 are uh, you know uh, among them they just know their mother tongue so yes we should respect each and every language and by the time they come to class 5 it's not that they know only the mother tongue and if they have uh, these are children who are coming to school which means they all live nearby mm -hmm. so they are familiar with the languages spoken in the region yes even though it may not be their mother tongue right so there are linguistic minorities in different ways mm -hmm. in our country mm -hmm. it may be like for example my mother tongue is kannada and in karnataka of course it's a majority language but in delhi it becomes a minority language yes. because of numeracy that is the number of uh, um, kannada speaking families will be certainly it will be less mm -hmm. so it would be a linguistic minority here but not elsewhere therefore every state every ut has a different take on multilingualism mm -hmm. and it is up to them therefore to actually uh, think about how they are going to address it but as i said in the english textbook in the content in the teachers pages and in the questions and in the activities that follow we endorse multilingualism okay um of course uh, there's another point mm -hmm. mm, some people also think that if we go on speaking in the mother tongue the child's ability to learn english is affected yes. negatively yes 
and therefore they speak English or a kind of English at home and uh, they think that they are actually doing something very good, but that is not the case okay. because they a child a human child can learn more than 10 languages or even more, but certainly 10 languages all with different scripts, different grammar, different vocabulary and still move easily from one language to another. Mm -hmm. This uh, has been um, underlined by research. It does not matter uh, if you are speaking your, your mother tongue and then move on to English and move on to Hindi and then back to your mother tongue. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are using whichever language is appropriate to the situation. Right. It does not mean that you do not know the English to use in that situation. It is only that the other person may not know and so you are using his or her language. It may be uh, many uh, things. It may be that you know in moments of emotion, mm -hmm. you burst out in your mother tongue. Yes. So, it is we are all multilingual. Yes. We are all of us multilingual right. in India. We all of us speak, I am not talking about writing. We are all of us speak and understand certainly more than one language. Yes, and specifically the dialects. Especially the dialects. Right. Yes, we have uh, around 1,600 languages in, yes. in the country. Yes, and uh, in in Schedule Eight we have uh, you know so many 22 and plus English and Hindi, uh, but we'll not get into that. That would be another yes. session, yes. of course. Right. Uh, so there's also the case of how parents can help. Uh, children okay. learn um, English I am saying. Now, when we say parents it means there are we are talking actually of a wide range. There are parents who have smartphones and internet at home who, yes. who can help their children in English because they know English. There are parents who may be graduates in English uh, in, who may be graduates and who know sufficient English to get by mm -hmm. and there may be parents who are literate but only in the regional language and in the mother tongue, they may not be able to write English, read or write English. Mm -hmm. And then there are parents who are illiterate. Mm -hmm. So, all kinds of parents are there and, yes. but one thing is common, all parents aspire that their child should be able to communicate in English. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, cutting across this range. Yes. The child of the rickshaw puller or the laborer would I mean the, the parent would want his or her child to be able to communicate in simple but correct English. Yes. They do not want flowery language and mm -hmm. they do not want you know very high Super uh, kind of English. Uh, huh, English, but they want that if uh, uh, foreigner comes or someone from the city comes the child should be able to say something in English. Right. We also have another series called raindrops which I can mention here. NCRT has developed a special series raindrops okay. and that is meant for grades 1 and 2 particularly of children who come from families living in rural or interior areas mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. They can also be used as a kind of you know um, supplementary material to help children whose English may not be very proficient. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are available on the NCRT website as well, they can be looked up. Okay. Also this poem, this poem that you liked so much, this is also available in the audio section. If they visit the NCRT website and uh, go to the audio section and type class 5, they will find this poem beautifully sung and recited by children. And if the parent can just download this and make the children recite, sing and the parent and other uh, siblings in the family also sing along, I am sure the child will enjoy it very much apart from the content of the poem mm -hmm. and that is how English is learnt, that is how mm -hmm. any language any is language, learnt yes. through exposure. And, and I think at, and as you, as you said we should respect every language, yesterday I, I, I got a call and phone was ringing and the call uh, was coming from plus 8 to something. Mm -hmm. So, I thought yes, kahin bahar se call aara hai. Main soch mein gaya ki main kya baat karunga if uh, it uh, it is coming from some other country, so we will not talk about the language. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Might be a possibility. So, I have a phone. Uthaya. They said, Namaskar, how are you? So, I am very happy with this. Baat ki ye jankar ki yes, and today, luckily, this session is happening. So, this is really a wonderful thing, and nothing is waste. Everything is wonderful. We just need to see, and uh, we, should our, uh, we, uh, we should focus on the uh, perfect thing, as uh, uh, Professor Varda rightly said. 
सो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड इन दिस सेशन बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट चैप्टर वन एंड टू एज वेल सो हम कितना कवर कर पाएंगे लेट सी वी आर एक्चुअली वेन आई से चैप्टर वन एंड टू चैप्टर सीम्स अ वेरी यू नो बिग नेम फॉर अ पोएम एंड अ लेसन इन द प्राइमरी स्टेजेस चैप्टर इज जनरली यूज वेन देर इज अ वॉल्यूम एंड दिस बुक सर्टनली इज नॉट अ वॉल्यूम एनी वे वी हैव क्लब्ड दैम टूगेदर एज यूनिट वन all teachers know it as unit 1 they don't call it chapter 1 and 2 but yes the first one is a poem and the second one is a lesson as we have seen now the the both of them have been put together for a reason that uh, there is you know the world around us that is the theme here the world around us can include as you said uh, the ice cream man the potter the weaver the cobbler the tailor Mm-hmm. and not just you know skyscrapers and um, famous people astronauts. it is the ordinary ha huh? <laughs> <laughs> skyscrapers and astronauts so we uh, it's the ordinary people who who actually um, i mean life around us is mostly created by ordinary people yes agreed yes so uh, it's and but they get less attention you know yes. in in uh, history in epics it's always about gods or kings mm-hmm. or famous people the mm-hmm. common people's food habits cuisine clothing what they do in daily life is not recorded so much nowadays they are being recorded so they are um, as you know like the vegetable scraps how it took a king to tell the chef and then he invented this new dish the word scrap for example now we come back to what the parents can do to help mm-hmm. children one the parents should tell stories even in their mother tongue to children this results in cognitive development it increases the curiosity of the child and it also you know makes a kind of uh, if the child is able to predict what will happen next mm-hmm. which means the child is thinking ahead of the story mm-hmm. which means again cognitive uh, development is going on here so that a story can move in two ways one is you are narrating a story once upon a time and then it begins it moves to a certain point and then a character is faced with a situation where he may go this way or this way and the child at this point can be asked what do you think the ch- character will do what would you have done if the if you had been at that point and why so when you talk when you're narrating stories you're also making the child think and then you go on with the story and then pause again and ask why did the character prefer to do this than that and uh, would would it have been better if he had done this instead of that so things uh, do improve mm-hmm. with um, mm, as i was saying about vegetable scraps here the word scraps s c r it mm. begins with s c r let us look here at some of the um, consonant cluster the first one s and h is here s t is a consonant cluster here this is s h mm-hmm. so if this only this one can be given to a child and he or she can be asked why don't you form words mm, yes. with s h yes so a class 1 child may write sheep yes um shawl another one may write shawl another one may write you know shop, uh, there can be S-H-O-P, shop ha huh, yes, shop because yes. we we we, hmm. we go daily yes uh, on on shops huh. and uh, we buy yes uh, we daily, we buy daily essential daily things shop, essential yes. things yes hmm. this word st here mm-hmm. so it can be if you ask a child go on writing go on right, writing right. four five words so stop the stool. first the first word comes in their mind because ah. uh, generally when we move out they uh, see the uh, traffic signal traffic and they signal. said papa yes. this is the red signal ah. we should stop yes and this is the right no, this the is the green one. now we can go so uh, you just said go so when it is red it is stop s t o p and when it is uh, amber then you actually s- get ready which means you start getting ready and when it is uh, green you go so start mm-hmm. stop and start two words any primary child would be knowing right so also with ma here map mat these are yes. simple enough words then mm, it can go on to make make and, and then can go uh, for the month may, march 
Yes, March and so yes. on. Marvelous would be a very long yes, word, yes. of course. It depends but upon the class it depends, and the. Ha, yes. It depends on if they have heard that word. Yes. For example, in um, Jammu Kashmir, in Srinagar, for instance, the word houseboat mm -hmm. is so common. The yes. word houseboat, it consists of nine letters. Yeah, right. And it's a word which is a combination of house and, and boat. boat. Yes. But it's so common that for that child it is not at all difficult mm -hmm. because he has been seeing it every day of his life, of right. his or her life. So also with frock, fr, frock we can have from yes. and so on, spur then spoon and so mm -hmm. So first day they may write only about uh, four or five words but these will be at the back of their mind. Right. The, um, at another you know uh, layer they will be thinking. How much, rich, how much rich vocabulary they have yes. as per their class and their so abilities so that ha, they can write. They may be knowing words but at that moment it may not have occurred to them yes. but so the next day or a day or two later when mm. you give them they may give. Uh, come up with more words. Right. So, that is how vocabulary can be developed in a very uh, fun way. Okay. So, let us proceed and uh, I request you Professor Varda please conclude this session because yes. we have hardly 4 minutes. All right. 4 minutes is a long time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this one I would like to show about this also. Okay. We have anagrams. A parent can use some of the words used in the lesson mm -hmm. to create anagrams. Okay. Anagram means like we have to rearrange this one is N O, the simplest one I am taking, mm -hmm. N O rearranged becomes O N. On. So, this is also a new word, it is okay. not a nonsensical uh, just yes. a combination, it is yes. a word. So, also with T O N, ton, rearranged it will become N O T, not mm -hmm. and so on. So, some words can be given to the child, this also can be shown to the child and asked to make new words right. from these, by only by rearranging the number of letters here is 2, the answer should also have 2, it should not be repeated. Okay. Here T O N, then N O T, mm -hmm. then W H O who, if you bring W here, mm -hmm. then it becomes H O W, how. how. Yes. So, such kind of games, vocabulary games can be played with children and um, they will be sure to enjoy and not just enjoy, but enjoy learning yes. uh, new words. So, it is important for them to learn to listen to folk tales in the mother tongue and maybe later on in English, but every parent should be able to say something because we after all we are rooted in our cultures right. and a mother tongue is a part of our cultures. Right. So, we are done now yes. I am sure and yes this is a wonderful session or vaakai mein ye kuch seekhne ke liye hai and to think about uh, who we are actually uh, as we uh, have seen the image of a king जो अपने रसोई से पूछता है कि आप स्क्रैप का क्या करने वाले हैं सो बी अ लीडर बी अ किंग एट योर होम और ये सारी चीज़ें आपको करनी है यही सब आज सीखने का आज मौका था आज वाकई क्लास पढ़ने का नहीं क्लास समझने का एक मौका था और आप उस मौके से कितना ज़्यादा फ़ायदा उठाएंगे वी विल सी लेटर ऑन बिकॉज जो भी काम किया जाता है उसका रिजल्ट कुछ दिनों बाद ही आता है सो वी विल सी कि आपने क्या किया एंड वी आर वेरी होपफुल दैट यू विल सेंड समथिंग अस Uh, जो भी आपने एनाग्राम्स वगैरह देखे हैं यू विल डू समथिंग एंड यू कैन मेक सम पिक्चर्स एंड क्लिक पिक्चर्स एंड सेंड अस एन ईमेल ऑन सी आई ई टी डॉट किशोर मंच एट द रेट ऑफ जी मेल डॉट कॉम ऑल दीज ई मेल्स विल बी फॉरवर्डेड टू प्रोफेसर वर्दा एंड शी विल गिव यू सम गुड कॉमेंट्स ऑन द ई मेल्स राइट इफ वी इफ वी रिसीव सो होपफुली वी विल सी इट और थैंक यू वेरी मच आई एम श्योर दिस सेशन विल give you some difference will make some difference in our daily lives as per the um, language as per uh, the need of the hour so thank you very much professor varda you came thank here you. and described this wonderful chapter 1 and 2 and yes i like the ice cream but i will have it at my home only no need to go out no need to take risk no need to do anything which you no need not to do so yes. this these are some of our requests to you and keep watching uh, channel 5 this is the trial run of pm e vidya channel 5 so uh, we will be right back with the next session of mathematics class 5 don't go away keep watching this session is over now namaskar namaskar